Okay, hello to everyone. So I am going to, to start uh, uh, today our workshop, the second day. And let me share my slides with you, first of all. Uh, do you see my slides? Just let me know <laughs> in, in the chat if you see them. Yes, okay, great. So let's start. So I, I hope that yesterday you had some fun <laughs> practicing at home, you know, the, uh, to, to draw all those uh, heat maps and, and to do the analysis for the differential express genes. Today we have the continuation, but but we will be dealing today with totally different topics. So yesterday, our major topic was the differential expression analysis. And today we will be speaking about the gene ontology, about the functional uh, uh, analysis of the genes. So <clears throat> let me introduce you what is the gene set enrichment analysis stands for. So we know that it can be very hard to interpret all the differentially expressed genes one by one, because sometimes there are too many of those ones. Sometimes it can be like two or 3,000 of these um, differentially expressed genes that would be also, you know, like statistically significant. And if we would want to analyze Y by one of them, it would be very difficult for us. And, and very often we want to get a bigger picture of what is changing in the transcriptome, in which, for example, functional pathways, biological or molecular pathways, most of our genes can be involved or those genes are changing. So in this way, we can, you know, like get the idea, you know, what could be the function of those genes. And you may want also to ask specific questions about any, you know, like particular groups of any particular categories of those genes. And you may want also to check if the list of the genes uh, you have is completely, you know, like random or, or it reflects some biology, underlying biology. Specifically, for example, if you are examining, you know, any specific uh, mm -mm, uh, for example, disease, like, for example, you would deal with the periodontal diseases, then you would want to see if any of those differentially expressed genes between, you know, your, your disease and the control group that you identify are associated with some kind of the inflammation process and so on. So, gene set enrichment analysis, in other we say also the functional enrichment analysis, is a common approach that is used for the identification of the predefined sets of the genes that are overrepresented among genes of interest. And actually, gene ontology is the collection of the control hierarchical vocabularies of defined terms representing gene properties. And as you see here on the right side, this nice graph, GO can be structured like the directed uh, graph, uh, acyclic graph. And, and this is, you know, like um, uh, 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 some kind similar to the phylogenetical uh, trees graphs because here each term has defined relationships to one another. So uh, it could be to one more or it could be to one or two more even domains. So there we can observe, you know, like parent child relationships, for example, a cellular component, you know, is associated with the cell part and cell part goes to the cell projection part and also to the plasma membrane part and cell projection part goes to the uh, plasma membrane bounded cell projection part and so on. So we see this relationship, they are, you know, like parent child, like in the phylogenetic uh, trees. So geotherms may have more than one parent term, as you can see here, like for example, 
plasma membrane region goes, you know, like to the plasma membrane uh, part uh, or to the membrane. And geo vocabulary is designed to be spe specific, uh, species agnostic. And what I want that you will remember that there are three separate but major domains of the gene ontology. So we are speaking about the biological process, like for example, visual perception, about the molecular function, like for example, gene protein couple receptor activity, and about the cellular component, photoreceptor author segment, for example. So you have to remember that the gene ontology is composed of the three major parts, three major domains that are biological process, molecular function, or cellular component. And gene ontology can be brought at this website. And if you go there, it will bring you to this website, Amy Go To, and you can browse the gene ontology, for example, here. So what is nice, there are many, many databases and annotations that can be used for the functional enrichment analysis. And, and there are some big ones, like for example, gene ontology, which is major framework for the functional annotation of all the genes in all the species using control vocabulary. And you can go to this website, then you can browse the gene ontology. There are CAC pathways, manually curated database of the biological pathways, very popular in each of the manuscripts that you know you would publish. You will uh, you will see those. Uh, they, they will mention CAC pathways. They are very important because. So those uh, uh, include, you know, the database of the biological pathways that are manually created. Another would be molecular signatures database, MSIGDB, collection of annotation gene sets for the, uh, for the uh, GCEA uh, tool. So this is GCEA stands for the gene set enrichment analysis. You should remember this there. And there are many, many tools, packages, online servers that you can run the functional analysis of the gene lists. And I just mentioned here several of them, like David, Bioinformatics, GCEA, Gorilla, many packages that you can run in the bioconductor, like Lima, GoSec, GoStat, StopGo. And many of those ones would be free, free of charge, and they are available, you know, uh, uh, online for downloading, like for example, free is GCEA, GoStats R package. For free could be top Go R package also. But there would be some of them that if you want to use them, you will have to pay, like ingenuity pathway analysis uh, <clears throat> and others. So many, many of them. And, and today for our workshop, I want that we will use one online tool that is free and, and it could be, you know, it's very, I find it very user friendly and you can run it, you know, uh, later on for your own project, for your analysis. So actually I want to teach you today how to use the Gorilla. This would be the online tool. And one tool that we will run with uh, using the coding. So it would be G-Profiler. Okay, so we will use R, uh, R coding to, to run also the G profiler. So one coding and one online tool. So let me introduce you to the, uh, to the first tool that we will be running. It would be the online. And I will go through it with you because I want, you know, like step by step to teach you what, what we need for the input, what you can get, what you should expect, you know, uh, 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 to get which results and so on. So you, uh, uh, so you will feel, you know, comfortable later on to, to use it by your own. So, uh, so we will uh, introduce today Gorilla. This stands for the, you know, like gene ontology analysis using Gorilla. And Gorilla stands for the gene ontology enrichment analysis and visualization tool. I like it because it's very user friendly and also gives you nice visualization graphs, you know, for your functional analysis. 
that could be very useful, you know, for any publication that you would want to uh, to publish, or also, you know, for yourself if you want to see uh, a, a fast uh, representation in which processes your um, your differential express genes would be involved. And uh, uh, and this tool was developed in Israel at the Technion, so. You, this is the, the website that you will be using today. You will have to uh, go to this website. And, but let me just, you know, introduce what you would be need, what you would need in order, you know, to run this analysis by yourself, okay? So you remember that yesterday evening, I sent you the email and I gave you the, uh, the access to the Google Drive. Uh, so let me, uh, so double check with you. Everyone received my email for the day two workshop, and I gave you the the link to the to the Google Drive folder. And in this Google Drive folder, you will see the files that would be up, down, and background. And those stand for those three files that you will need to use it for the input for the gorilla. So one file is with the list of the genes that are up regulated. One would be the file with the genes that are downregulated, and the last one would be the, the list of the uh, uh, background uh, genes. So, so, so let me tell you. So, gene upregulated, you know, as you remember, those would be those genes that are statistically significantly differentially expressed between, you know, the knockout and the wild type, but they would be upregulated, overrepresented uh, in your uh, in your uh, knockout yes so so uh, the log fold change would be over zero yes it would be positive like plus one plus two plus three the the genes that are down regulated in the disease group those would be uh, uh, those ones that are uh, uh, with log fold change uh, negative. So it would be log for change would be uh, less than zero, like minus two, minus three, minus four. Those would be those statistically differentially expressed genes with the, uh, you know, which are down regulated and log for change would be uh, less than zero. Yes. So, and there is also the third file that stands for the background gene list because comparison of your genes of trees of interest that would be you know up regulated or down regulated you want to compare to the proper background sets of the genes and this comparison is very critical however what is uh, challenging there is not known and you know published definition what is what background gene list background gene stands for so you know like with the p value you know that if p-value would be less than 0 0.05, those, you know, those genes would be statistically significant, that, yes? If the p-value would be more than 0 0.05, those would be, you know, the results are not statistically significant. You know this definition, but there is not known such a definition for the background gene list. And, and this is the challenge. So there is a lot of discussion about what should we use, uh, you know, for the as a list for our background gene list. And actually, in the environment in which I work in, in labs and, and in our collaboration labs, we, we decided that, you know, like in the past, we used like the background gene list if we were dealing, you know, uh, with the um, with the human genome, we would use all the, you know, genes that that are in, uh, included in the human genome. If we were working with the mouse data, mouse genome, then then we would use uh, as a background gene list all the genes that are contained, you know, within the uh, mouse genome. However, now there was a lot of, you know, like recent discussion. And we decided that many of those genes, you know, from the human genome or from the mouse genome were actually not expressed at all in our samples. And such comparison, you know, to use them as a background makes not sense. 
So, so we decided to, to use as a list of our background genes, those ones that are expressed in the samples. So, so we are not using anymore the whole entire mouse gene, mouse, uh, mouse uh, genes that are involved, you know, like that are included in the mouse genome, if we deal with the mouse data, of course. But only the, the list of those genes whose average expression would be, you know, uh, uh, we, we put greater than 10 in at least one of those two, two groups that we will be comparing. So generally, we want to see that those genes are expressed in the samples and the, the, the red counts are not zero or, you know, not one or two, but they are, uh, uh, they are present, okay, in the, in the samples. And also, when you choose your final gene sets for, to run the geo analysis, apart from the fact that, you know, like you divide those differentially expressed genes, you know, to up-regulated, down-regulated, you have to pay attention to the p-value. So, so, and actually we pay attention to the p-adjusted value when we run differential expression analysis, like I mentioned yesterday, we want to be, to be the, the, the p-adjusted value will be, you know, as, as low as possible. And so statistically significant. And we pay attention to the log fold change. So we want that it would be as high as possible, like plus, you know, I don't know, eight plus uh, nine and so on. Sometimes it's impossible. It's, it depends on the data set that you are dealing with or log fold change as low as possible, like minus seven, minus eight or something like this. And the first thing that you would, you know, consider while choosing your final jit set would be the association with your condition. Like I mentioned that, for example, if you are dealing with the, your disease would be the schizophrenia, for example, versus control, then you would want to see, you know, check if any of those genes are associated, you know, with any uh, neurological disorders or neurological functions. So we have to please go to the link now to the to the link that I sent you to the Google Drive for there. And we have to take those files and we will be uploading them together to the to the Gorilla website. I will show you. So we do it this way that I will do it for you, like we view together. And then you will do it. I will give you the time that you will run it by yourself. Okay. So upload files to the gorilla. So first of all, I want to show you. So when you go to this website, to the Technion for the gorilla, gene ontology analysis using gorilla, you will have several steps. For the step one, you have to choose organic. So because those are the mouse data, that we are dealing with it, we have to uh, uh, choose mus musculus. Mus musculus. For the second step, choose running mode. We have to put mark to unranked list of the genes because we will be putting always target genes and the background list. In the step three, you have to paste a rank list of the gene protein names. So in the upper part for the target set, I want that you will upload, you know, like first in the first run, you will upload, for example, the list of the down regulated genes. So you see genes down. And then in the background set, you will upload the, the background gene list. And in the second run, you will do the same, but you will use as a target set the list of the upregulated genes. And for the background set, you will use the same list for the background gene list. In the fourth step, you will choose an ontology. And I want that we will do all the analysis. So we mark all. We want to check all the three domains, process, function, and component. There are also, and then we, you know, search and, and uh, press search and read geo terms. We can also mark some advanced parameters like p-value threshold. Here is 10 power minus five, but you can put it, you know, 10 power minus three, you know, like whatever you prefer. Okay, so, so I am going to now stop to share the presentation and go to the website, to the Gorilla. I will do it.
for you and then you will do it by yourself. I will give you a few minutes, okay? Okay, I am going to start to share my screen. Okay, so you see, this is the, the, the website, Gorilla, a tool for identifying and geo terms. Just let me know in the chat if, if you are seeing the Gorilla website that I browse now. Yes, okay, great. So let's do it, okay? So this is the gorilla. We have to choose the step one, choose the organism. So let's mark mus musculus for the mouse, okay? Then step two, choose running mode. You, I want that we will mark to unrank list of the genes, okay? A target and the background uh, list. And then is the step three, please, we have to upload for the target set, let's, try to upload the down regulated. Down, okay. Down, okay. And then for the background sent list, we will browse the background, okay? Background uh, uh, gene list. And for in the last step, step four, choose an ontology. Please mark all, okay? Process, function, and component. We want to mark all. And and I put 10 uh, power minus three for the p-value threshold. Okay, let's search and read geoterms. Okay, so this is the way how you do it. So please do it by yourself now. I will give you, you know, like 10 minutes to run, but for separately you run for the upregulated and separately for the downregulated. And when you, you do it, we will go over the results together, okay? How to interpret what we should get and so on, okay? So take your time now. I will pause the recording now and 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 you will do it okay let me know if you have any troubles and and I will help you okay okay so let me uh, share the screen and we will go to see the results Okay, do you see my presentation now? Okay, great. So let's go. <clears throat> so let us look at, at the results for the downregulated genes, yes, with the gorilla. So we have those three domains, different one, process, function, and component, and I ask you to run all of them. So if we look on the process, you remember that our data we are dealing, our data sets is with the development of the photoreceptors, you know, like with the vision, with the sight, something, you know, with the visual perception are connected. And if you look at the results, we receive very nice. So many of our genes, you know, from that we, uh, we used as an input, that were differentially expressed in our knock knockout versus wild type are actually involved in the visual perception. Yes, we see here system process, nervous system process, then sensory perception, sensory perception of light stimulus and visual perception. And here the other one, detection of light stimulus. 
What I like about the Gorilla, that it's user friendly, you know, very easy to use, and also gives you this, you know, this nice graph visual representation, very useful for publication records. And also it gives you p-value color scale. So you see that it goes, uh, 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 if it's red, then it's the most statistically significant results. So if we see something red in those graphs, we are very happy, you know, and then it goes, you know, to the dark orange shade, then the light orange, uh, uh, yellow and white. And actually the visual perception and detection of the light stimulus that we were, you know, this is the condition that we are dealing with has, is very statistically significant. You see, there are marked red. So geotherms can be very broad, but you know, it gives you a big picture uh, uh, of all the genes that are, uh, uh, you know, differentially expressed within your data set. Because if you would want, you know, to take it one by one, it would be very difficult to interpret. So this was the process. And also it gives you this table, like with the geo terms, gene ontology terms. And you see how nice the results are. Visual perception, sensory perception of the light stimulus, sensory perception, nervous system process, detection of light stimulus, everything what is very, uh, you know, like important for, the, for our analysis, for our condition, which is development of the photoreceptors. Here we see in the column, uh, uh, the next column, the p-values and the p-adjusted value that we are mostly interested in. And also uh, it gives you the enrichment scores and I will elaborate a little bit more uh, uh, in uh, two minutes about the enrichment score. Generally, we want to see it, you know, as high as possible. And then it gives you the, the genes. So here is the, sh you, you can see the, 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 the genes that are actually involved in each of those pathways. So if you click plus to show genes, we will see that, for example, in this first one, uh, a geo term that is visual perception, there are those, you know, those specific genes involved from our data set. So it gives you the, the, their names. RDH12, for example, IMPG1, Myo7A, and so on. So you can see the exact genes that are involved in each of those terms, geo terms. Then for the function, we didn't get any results. It's fine. We maybe, you know, none of the genes, you know, uh, uh, was, you know, like, uh, um, uh, was involved, you know, like in those uh, uh, processes that are, you know, uh, within this database. And then there is the last domain that we are checking for the gene ontology is the component. And for the component, we also receive very nice results. You see the nice visualization. And look, red, red box, photoreceptor other segment. And the ciliary part, photoreceptor other segment membrane, everything what is associated with the uh, photoreceptors, with the vision or sight, yes? And those are statistically very significant because they are marked red or orange, yes? So, so this was, and for the component also, you, you, you see this table with the geo terms and their descriptions with the p-values and also, you know, p-adjusted, FDR p-adjusted value. After multiple testing, the, the, you, can, you can press to show the, the specific gene list and you will get the gene list of those ones. Uh, and like, for example, here in this GO10 photoreceptor other segment, we see that those specific genes, you know, like are involved like ABCA4, PDE, 6B, and so on. But now what I want to highlight is the enrichment score. So actually, let me explain what is the enrichment score. So we know that the, 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 the gene set enrichment analysis, GCEA, is the method that we want to identify the, the classes of the genes in our case that would be overrepresented in a big data set of genes and, and may have associated, uh, association with disease phenotypes. And our phenotypes is, you know, like photoreception, uh, uh, photoperception, yes? 
And this method uses statistical approaches to identify significantly and rich or depleted groups of the genes. And researchers performing high, fruit, uh, high throughput experiments that yield sets of the genes, like here, for example, we have a set of the differential expressed genes, uh, often want to retrieve a functional profile of the gene set. So we want to find out, you know, in which function, in which biological processes are, are those genes that are statistically significantly differentially expressed in our data sets are involved because we want to maybe to examine, to investigate more the underlying biological processes. And the way that it's done it's that we compare the input gene set, like for example, here it was the our input was the downregulated, uh, the list of the downregulated genes, to all the terms that are you know uh, uh, in the database uh, uh, in the gene ontology. Okay, so the the gorilla has his own database and it's comparing the the list of those genes that we are using. You know, it's running for us the statistical analysis. And the statistical test can be performed for each bin. So for each term for the in the, within this gene ontology to see if it's enriched for the input genes. And, and because it's statistical analysis, we want to see you know, how far you know, our input genes uh, uh, are uh, you know, like expressed in, uh, among others. So we calculate the enrichment score. And the enrichment score represents the amount to which the genes in this data set are over represented at the either top or bottom of the list. So how far, you know, uh, 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 they are, you know, like much more expressed within the data sets. And, and here is nice explanation that it, you know, like that maybe it will be easier for you to understand. So usually if you have like, for example, two lists of the genes and uh, uh, regulated between two conditions. So for example, we take the foreground list and the long list. So, so let's say that we have, we are comparing, you know, like um, two conditions and we have a subset list of the genes uh, and we call it the foreground list and a long list of the genes that, you know, we can identify from these two conditions. And this would be the background gene list. So foreground list would be, for example, for us upregulated gene list or downregulated. And the long list of the genes identified from the differential expression would be the background list. So the enrichment scores will tell us, you know, will refer us to an overrepresentation analysis. Like for example, here in our uh, case, it would be the, the gene ontology terms. And when we would uh, compare, you know, this, this foreground list to the background list. So if we are comparing the upregulated genes to the, to the background uh, ones. So if they are, for example, very much overrepresented or very low, you know, and if the enrichment score is higher, then we are more happy. And the same analysis, actually, we are la we run for the gorilla. I'll ask you to run for the upregulated genes, and and also we were checking those three domains like process, function, and the component. So let's see here this graph, and 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 what we receive: ion transport, G protein kappa receptor signaling pathways the color shade you pay attention, you know, orange, it means, you know, like that the p-value is uh, between 10 uh, to minus five or 10 to minus seven, power to minus seven. And here is the G-term description p-value and you can check also which specific genes are involved. And also here function, we didn't receive any results and for the component, we received, you know, this uh, this visualization, intrinsic component of the membrane, integral component of the membrane. Okay. So this was the the the. This is the gorilla, uh, and and also you know the table for the upregulated, the geoterms, and so on. And you can check which specific genes are involved. So so I I think that gorilla is very useful for you, it would be, you know, you can use it. It's very easy to use, to run it. You know how to do it. And, and, and generally, like in our practice, 
we don't usually use uh, for the functional analysis the coding uh, 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 the coding possibilities usually we use just the online tools many of them and i will show you you know what you can expect also if you use it doesn't have to that you will use the gorilla you can uh, use any other of the uh, available you know tools for G, for gene ontology analysis but just you know i will present you the the maybe like free uh, 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 most common ones and i will show you the results you know what you should expect if you use them so I will run the example with you now, okay? And 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 uh, but before we'll do this one, I would like that you will fill it in the attendance sheet, okay? This is important for us. So I will give you the the link in the chat so you can fill it in the attendance sheet. Okay, I am putting now in the Zoom the attendance sheet to everyone. Okay, so you should fill it in. Take like two, three minutes to fill it in. Okay, and let me know if you have any problems to to you know like to open it. I think it should be it. Sh you should be fine. Okay. Fill it in and take, you know, like two, three minutes for it. Start the recording. Okay, I am going to share the, the my presentation. And I will show you now like some examples of the functional analysis that I did for my projects. And, and I run functional analysis using different tools, just to let you know that those other tools are online also available. You can use it for free, uh, but, but maybe, you know, some of them are not so, so user-friendly because each of those tools will require usually some kind of the preparation of the data in the format that is required by this specific tool. Okay, so let me go with the first example. This is the functional analysis that, uh, that I had for my data set. And actually I was dealing with the pain data. So I had to compare pain patients versus healthy ones. And the biofluid that I was using, it was saliva, not blood, not urine saliva. And I was dealing with the human data, okay? And what I wanted to show you today, many times, you know, now we are speaking about the, the long RNAs, about the messenger RNAs. But very often you have to, for example, uh, um, uh, to do the analysis for the micro RNAs. And, and actually, you know, you, it's very difficult to, to, to find how it should be done. So actually, if you have to do the functional analysis for the microRNAs, not messenger RNAs, you take this specific microRNA and you have to go, for example, here I was working with the microRNA 4513, okay? And I have to put it into the mirror base, okay, mirror base. And in the mirror base, you can find the gene targets for them for this specific microRNA. Okay, so you can use mirror base and target scan, and here you can get the predicted targets from the mirror base. And those, when you get those list of those pre, uh, predicted gene targets, so you take those the list of those genes. Here it was 
more than 3,000 target genes I received. So you take those 3,000 of the target genes and you, I put into three different databases that are very commonly used. So David Bioinformatics is very commonly used website, online tool for the functional analysis and gene ontology. The other one is CAG database and Go Miner that is recommended by NIH. So I will show you what results, if you use those online tools, what you can get using those tools just for your information and feel free, you know, later on to try it, to use those, those websites by your own, okay? So here is David by Informatics Functional Annotation Tool, very commonly used. And, and I put my, you know, my data set here and it gives you, you know, the, the, the results in form like this. And there are specific ones that you would be interested. Like for example, you would want to check, oh, sorry the gene ontology and the pathways. And, and what is nice about the David Bioinformatics for the publication records and so on, the CAC pathways are highly recognized. And actually by using David Bioinformatics, you will receive the result that will include the CAC pathways. In, uh, if any of your you know, genes would be involved in the CAC pathways. And you remember that my data set was associated with the pain. And the functional analysis sometimes, you know, when you have a lot of input, you will get very long list of the results. And it, it takes, it's very time consuming. So it takes very, a lot of your time to search exactly sometimes what, what can be significant for your study, okay? So if I am dealing with pain, I would search for something that it would be associated with the neurological functions, yes? because I'm uh, dealing with the pain data. And here I found, here is the gene counts. It was like 481, uh, 481 and the percent of those genes, you know, out of the whole ones, uh, out of the full data set, it gives you the p-value and also Benjamin is, the, so this is the, the p-adjusted value, okay? So let's go more. And, and it gives you, you know, like different, uh, uh, different tests. You have to go one by one and check if any of, for you makes any sense. And then you can put the results in, in form of the, you know, like circle graph, like here. And, and, you know, like I was searching for any neurological diseases, so bipolar disorders, schizophrenia. But those would be not so much connected with the pain. So the results were not so, you know, like not so good for my condition. Then it gives you, you know, functional annotation charts and you go one by one to check if any of those could be associated with any, you know, like pain. Geo, the list of the uh, gene ontology and geo terms. And here, you know, it, it, it includes uh, the, the names of those specific terms, the, the gene counts, how many of those genes are involved in them, the percentage of how, how much it's from the whole data set, p-value and the p-adjusted value. And, and here I received negative regulation of response to stimulus, what could be associated with the pain or regulation of response to stimulus. And the gene counts, you know, the p-value, p-adjusted, then you can take also extract the specific genes that are involved in each of those pathways. And here in geotens, I receive negative regulation of nervous system development, regulation of neuron depth. And because I told you that I was dealing with the salivary data, so not tissue, not blood, but the saliva, I also received that you know, some indication that some of the genes as that are associated with the salivary gland development or a salivary gland morphogenesis, which is nice. No, no, new, all neurogenesis, neuron differentiation. So sometimes it, it can be very time consuming if you want to go by one by one and search what could be important for your, you know, for your study, yes? If you study pain, what could be associated? 
it gives you pathways by BBID, Biocarta, and CAC pathway. The most important well known would be the CAC pathway. So you see here in the Biocarta, we received two terms, signal transduction through um, uh, through uh, uh, IL1R and P3, uh, P38 map uh, signaling pathway. And in the Biocarta, they will allow you to, to get those nice visualization of those processes. And also what is nice, you know, you can mark with the red stars those genes that were that are associated with these specific pathways and they were detected in your study. And this is by the CAC pathways. And this is nice because David Bioinformatics gives you results that will include the CAC pathway analysis. I, I found some of them that are associated with the pain, retrograde endocannabinoid signaling, GABAergic synapse, and cholinergic synapse. And CAC pathways also, you know, like what is nice, it, it allows you to draw those nice visualization for those specific pathways. And you can also mark with the red stars those specific genes that were identified in your data sets and are involved in this specific pathway. The other one, gamma amino butyric acid. And for the salivary secretion, also the same. And here is the nice visualization. And then in other pathways. So this was David by informatics, very commonly used uh, uh, an online tool. And I would guess that it's also easy to use, user-friendly. You can try it by your own. Always check if you use specific online tool, how you should prepare the data to use it as an input. Because each of those online tools will have their specifics, you know, how, how to do it. And each of them will require different format, OK? So it's not like that the same data set, you know, you can just use uh, in any unchanged form for all those online tools. You have to always prepare the data for this specific online tool that you are going to use. Another website that I would recommend to explore is the KO, uh, CAC Orthology Database. And, and like I mentioned, for example, CAC Orthology Database has his own KO system. This is the network-based classification of KO shown below. And what does it mean? So for example, we have our genes that are were differentially expressed, okay, in our data set. So you cannot use it as an input for this database, for the CAC orthology database. You have to go to their website and they will tell you how you should transform those regular gene names into the into their KO system, okay? So you have to use the KO code from their website. So the, the regular gene names would be, uh, would be, you know, like changed into the, translated into their KO code. And then afterwards you can put it like the input for this database, for the CAC orthology database. And here is, the, the results, if you use this website, the results you will get, it would be this way, you know, the, the name of the specific CAC pathway. And, and in the parentheses, you will find how many of the genes from your data sets were involved, okay? Like here, for example, starch and sucrose metabolism, seven of them, seven of the genes from your data set were detected there. Another set of the results. And the last website that, you know, like uh, uh, that is also like widely used is GoMiner. And this website, you know, it's on the NIH uh, uh, website, very recommended. So if you are going to write a grant, it's good to include the results, you know, uh, uh, from the functional analysis done by uh, using GoMiner. And this is how it looks. So you see NIH, Gov, but also, Please check because sometimes when you run the analysis, the the the, um, the names that you will receive would be different from the 
from from the from the names of those genes that are uh, included in the gold miner database so check exactly you know if you have any differences maybe you will have to run some kind of the intersection so the the names of the genes would be a, a good fit to use it for the as an input to the go miner but what i like it about this website is that they send you the results to the to your email okay so after you run the analysis you you should expect to receive the emails with the results and here the results will go it they will send you the summary report like for example with geo terms their names how many uh, you know how many of those total genes are involved in those processes how many were changed what is the enrichment score log fold change and what is very nice what we use very often you know for the publication records or for the you know like grant writing is those heat maps so actually it allows you to draw those nice heat maps and you will have in the column you see in the columns there are the specific genes okay and you see their expression in the columns and then in the rows so horizontally you will have the geoterms and here you have geoterms golgi membrane geoterms acting binding and if you go like this then you will check exactly which in which specific geoterm how how the expression of those specific genes look like so very nice uh, visual representation it allows you to, if you use this website and then you of course you can always go to the to the publications also to to find you know in which processes uh, 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 the, the, uh, those genes can be involved and and now i will also show you another example that i run for the data sets and that i run functional analysis and here actually i was dealing with the data sets that included condition it was chronic kidney disease versus healthy and the sample was not saliva but i was dealing with the plasma data and not with the human data but with the mouse genome data so I divided my data sets, you know, like into the under expressed and over expressed differentially expressed genes and run analysis using mouse mine. Oh, mouse mine actually for the mouse data is very user friendly website. I would highly recommend that you will try it. And this I run for the under expressed uh, differentially expressed genes and here gene ontology enrichment and and you remember the condition that i was checking was that it was chronic kidney disease versus healthy yes so let's go more so here i see that a lot of i was detected you know i detected for example inflammatory response because chronic kidney disease you know it, it you will get a lot of inflammatory response you know and you can get the specific genes that are involved you know uh, 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 in in this process so it was 42 and you can get the exact their names like here they are mark and the p-values abnormal inflammatory response it was detected you see p-value how many of those genes it was 71 the exact list of the genes you can get it abnormal acute inflammation decrease acute inflammation decrease inflammatory response increased inflammatory response and and i used also david bioinformatics for the same data uh, data sets and i i uh, used the under uh, express data and what is what is you know like um, uh, surprising but you know like if you use one tool sometimes the results would be a little bit different than if you use another tool so sometimes if you don't get you know any promising results using one tool please feel free to try another one maybe with another one you will get some result that would be you know more significant for your analysis so david by informatics showed me cake pathways it was tnf signaling pathways and pi3k ag signaling pathways and it gives you the gene counts p value uh, uh, p adjusted 
And when I checked, actually, this one, the, this uh, pathway, P, uh, PI3K ARC signaling pathway, in the literature, it says that I found a lot of publication that actually this pathway is associated with the renal fibrosis. And I am dealing with chronic kidney disease. So renal fibrosis is very much of interest for me. So I would go to check, you know, which of those genes specific are involved uh, in, in, in this pathway. And from our data sets, 18 genes were uh, detected to be over represented, you know, and involved in this pathway. And these are the, the ensemble ID for those genes and the regular gene, gene names. CAC pathway, as I mentioned, it allows you those nice graphical visualizations. And the same, I, I checked TNF signaling pathway. I went to the literature and it so and 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 it's known to be associated with the renal diseases and I am dealing with the chronic kidney diseases. So, and 18 of the genes from my data sets were, as, were actually involved in this, uh, in this pathway. And these are the ensemble ID and the regular gene names. And it draws you also those nice visualization and you can mark with the red star those specific genes that are involved, uh, uh, that were identified in your data set. Uh, and in and they are a part of this TNF signaling pathway. I did the same for the for the overexpressed genes. I ran the same with the mouse mine, and actually I received very nice results for my condition that is cr uh, chronic kidney disease. So I received abno abnormal urine homeostasis, abnormal urination, polyuria. And you check p and you check the, those exact genes, the names of the genes that are involved in these pathways. And here again, abnormal urine homeostasis, abnormal urination, polyuria, abnormal renal urinary system physiology, renal urinary system phenotype, abnormal urine osmolarity, abnormal renal water transport, abnormal renal water homeostasis, you may want to check which of those specific genes uh, from your data sets are involved in those. So very good results for very significant results for my condition that I was checking. Abnormal renal transport, decreased urine osmolarity. And the same I did using David Bioinformatics. I took the overexpressed data set and, and for pathways that I, I found in the literature are associated with the, with the chronic disease were identified. AMPK signaling pathway, adipose, uh, adipose cytokine signaling pathway, PPAR signaling pathway, and vasopressin regulated water reabsorption. Yes, so those were. And I went to the literature and vasopressin regulated water reabsorption signaling pathway is definitely associated, you know, with the uh, uh, renal water transport, you know, like if you have, you know, if your kidney are healthy or even you have any kidney disease and four genes out of my data set were involved in these pathways. And here you see the names of those genes. It allows you to draw this map. You can mark with the red stars also those genes from your data set that are involved in this pathway. Also here in, with Geotherm, I, I, uh, a lot of, you know, like um, significant for my study, I received results, renal water absorption, vasopressin regulated water reabsorption. Okay. And before we will go to the to the coding part, I want that you will I will send you now the link to the uh, to the quiz for today, and I want that you will do the quiz. Okay, so let me stop share now, and we will take like ten minutes break, and you will you will do the the quiz part. Cord. And I am going to share my screen the presentation okay back so now we are back to the practical part so i told you that during this workshop we will be using one online tool and we did it was the gorilla and we would be using one uh, coding okay that would be g profiler 
And in the email yesterday, I told you to uh, to uh, to download the the G profiler. Okay, uh, so so I gave you the link, and it's very important that you will install it. Okay, so G profiler actually uh, um, it has two versions. One is the online one, and one is with the coding. We will be using the the coding one, but actually. I very long time for the most recent years I've never used coding ones because the online tools are so so much more convenient, so much faster and 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 easier and gives you you know like so nice visualizations that almost by like personally and and within my friends you know the coding is very little used maybe one out of ten my friends would use it. So we go mostly for the online and G profiler apart from the coding version, it has also the online tool and 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 you can see here uh, the G profiler and I think the online the, the recent version is even G profiler too. And you can put you know uh, as an input your the, your list of the down regulated genes or up regulated. And, and what is nice, actually, that the G profiler online gives you very nice visual representation. Like, for example, if your genes of interest, you know, in which geoterms they are involved. So it gives you the full name, like, for example, spectrum binding, geo number, and the P adjusted value, log full chain. And here you see the names of the specific genes. And you can see which of them within this specific geoterm are, are uh, involved. Okay, so this is here, for example, for our uh, for our data set, we see that visual perception and and log fold changes and p adjusted is very significant. Log fold changes are very you know like uh, 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 very very good, and we see exactly which genes within the visual perception is involved. So I like very much this graphical representation. And here you see photoreceptor other segment, photoreceptor cell cilium, and it gives you geoterm, P adjusted, log fold change, and also uh, marks you with which, which genes from your data sets are involved. So, so actually G profiler online is, is uh, I think nicer <laughs> to use than with the coding, but uh, uh, but let's 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 try also to like to 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 use the uh, to do the exercise with the coding, and actually they um, uh, the the G profiler uh, coding has also I checked now the possibility of doing some visualization before it was just you know that you could get the the geoterms for the up regulated genes and separately for the for the down regulated but it didn't give you the possibility of of creating you know any heat maps and visualization now it does i didn't uh, update my scripts yes you know you know like to to include the visualization because if i use the g profiler then I would go for the online version because it gives you, you know, like so nicely, you know, like peer adjusted log for change and those 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 graph with genes, you know, are included there. That I would go rather for the online version. Okay, but let's do it uh, within today a little bit coding now the practical part, the second part because we did the online, so now the the coding. And and what I am going to do, I am going to go through with you through each step to explain you, you know, what what you are doing when you run the scripts for the G profiler. And actually, now there is newer version is G profiler to the newest one. So so don't worry if you run those scripts that you get the warning message that there is, you know, like updated version G profiler to available. I should update the scripts for, for, the, for the recent one, but you can disregard this warning message. So first step is uh, that you will have to install the required libraries. Okay. And I ask you, you that you will install the package. Okay. The, the G profiler R in the email that I sent yesterday. So please double check, you will need this one, okay? Then you have to load the required libraries, the, the G profiler R, 
And this is important step. So set your own working directory. So you have to set the working directory to the file with the gene file list, okay? And, and it cannot be, it cannot be, you cannot use mine, okay? You cannot use mine. And then you have to read files, so read files, and we have how many files? Three, yes, three, you remember. So one, it would be up, down, and background. So up is the list with the up-regulated genes, down is with the down-regulated genes, and the background stands for the background gene list, okay? And then the next step is store genes as a vector, and then you will have to run gene ontology for the up-regulated, so GO terms up-regulated G profiler, and for the down-regulated list of the genes, GO terms down-regulated. And then you will export the results. So you will export the results and you will receive two files, CSV files. One would be with the list of the, uh, you know, for the GO terms for the up-regulated genes and one for the down-regulated and you will not get any visualization. So, so it would be those, those tables. And what I am going to do with you now, I am going to run those scripts in my R studio. So you will see it and we'll, you know, go, uh, uh, we'll repeat those steps. And then I will show you, you will do it. You will start to do it by yourself. And I will show you what you should expect as your results. And this would be also the second part of your homework from today, okay? The first one uh, is the homework that I want to see for those people who take this workshop for credit, the results from the gorilla, separately for the up-regulated and separately for the down-regulated genes, okay? From those three components. And, and, and now the second part would be, you know, from the G profiler, two files for the up-regulated and down-regulated genes. Okay, so I am going to stop to share and I am going to our studio. Okay, do you see my R studio? Okay, great. So remember, install the required libraries, the package G profiler R, you need it, okay? The next step, you have to load the required uh, uh, libraries, so the G profiler R. Then remember, set working directory to file with gene file list. So you have those three files for, with the up, down, and background gene list. So don't use my, <laughs> you have to run the, the, the pathway that you have, where you have your files, okay? If you get the, the okay, so then the read, uh, read files, okay, read files. Then the next step would be store genes as a vector. And then you will run gene ontology. So first of all, for the up-regulated gene, geoterms. It's running. Oh, and when you run, you will get this warning message. Please consider using the new package G profiler too, okay? So, so yes, so there is the new version. I have to update the scripts, okay? And I am doing the same for the GO term for the down regulated. Okay, it's done. The same warning message. So disregard this warning message. And the, the, the last important step, export results. So you should receive two files, two CSV files, one with the upregulated, uh, with the uh, GO terms for the upregulated genes and one for the downregulated. And those two files, for those people who take this course for the credit, I want to, to receive them. 
Okay, and I should receive those those two files. Okay, I am stop sharing. So so now you have to you 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 have to do it by yourself. Okay, so take those last minutes and try you know like try to to run it by yourself and i will give you a few minutes to try it and then i will i will go over the results what you should expect that that you will and then uh, uh, for those people who who take it for credit i want that you will uh, uh, send me those uh, those files with those results okay Ah, <clears throat> yes, there is a question. Okay, uh, for the uh, for the gene ontology homework, what you sh uh, are a what you should uh, send me? Okay, through the email. So so you not the web link, the screenshot. So I I I think that you can send like a screenshot or maybe do like in the presentation form and save it like PDF. That for example, upregulated and. And those three components, okay, cellular, uh, 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 molecular, and biological, okay, and then for the this, the same for the up and down regulated, okay. So the screenshots or in form of the PDF combined, comp, uh, you know, a document. So gorilla results for the up and down and for those three components and the G profiler results. So just two files, okay. There's two CSV files for the upregulated and downregulated with the geom terms. Is it clear now? It's raining. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's gonna make it harder to get vaccinated. Yes.
Okay, while you are working, you know, running those those scripts, let me just show you briefly the what you you know results you should get it, you know, what you should expect just for your information. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. Do you see my screen now? Okay, great. So actually what I was asking you that that if you run the G profiler separately for the upregulated downregulated, you should receive two files. Okay, one file would be with the uh, 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 for the upregulated one for the downregulated the CSV file. And, and you can see here, for example, with geo term and, and the exact name of this, of this uh, uh, geo term and exact, which exactly genes are involved in those uh, geo specific processes. And the same you will get for the downregulated, okay? It would be the, the geo term, the exact name and which, which specific genes would be involved there. So this would be like the, 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 the homework for you just to try it. But like personally, I think that I would, I would recommend more to use the, uh, the online tools, try to use the online tools. Generally we use just now only most of them. And, and if you would ask me which one do you do I commonly use, I would say that most often I would use David by informatics. Very often for the mouse data, I would use also mouse mine. And regarding all the materials, so so like Eloy told in the beginning, all the materials, you know, I sent you the links to the Google Drive folder. He will upload also there all the all the uh, materials that I sent to you within those links from both days, day one and day two, from yesterday also, and also the recordings. So from yesterday and from today. So feel free if you want to go over it back again. To, to ask him for the access. And, and let me know if you have, you know, like any more questions. Actually, I'm gonna just do that right now. So everybody in this uh, should have access to that box drive. If for some apparent reasons you don't, you're having difficulties, reach out to me. Uh, I should be able to upload today's video by this afternoon. So uh, I should be, you guys should be have access by now. Okay, so if there is, I don't see any questions in the chat, so feel free to take your time to do, you know, to run the G profiler by yourself. And, and, and I encourage you highly to try those other online tools like the Gorilla, MouseMind, David by Informatics and others that I presented, you can explore it and, and, and just use it. Sometimes you will get, you know, like some differences in the results. So if you try online one, and, and you didn't find nothing significant for your study, try to use another one. Feel free to ask, you know, like any questions you have. 
If not, I would like to thank you very much for today and for yesterday's session. And Eloy will be sending you the, uh, the evaluation of the workshop. So, so your feedback would be of great value for, for you, how you enjoyed the journey yesterday and today. Thank you so much. Uh, goodbye.